Howdy, Ags. Welcome to the tailgate, the Christmas edition of the Ags tailgate. Welcome. Merry Bye. Christmas. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Very good. We'll be singing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sing yeah. here a little bit. Also, the signing day edition of the signing podcast. Day. We won't talk much about recruiting, though. We're going to talk about the lack of signing day or yeah. signing day? Ah, such an exciting day, though. All the hope in the world out there, right? Like, right now, you got great players coming in. You are excited about the future. There's a new coach, new schemes. I mean, it's just nothing but hope, sunshine, rainbows. Maybe some unicorns, right? I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Could be, could be unicorns. We could use but, unicorns. Before we get into the depths of this, though, today's episode is brought to you by Matthews Electric. If you blew up your house by using too many Christmas lights, call Matthews Electric. They can help you. Just reach out to Blaine, 979 6403 Light up your home. Light up your life. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent, that's good stuff. Folks, I want to encourage everybody to email us at agstailgate at, I, I'm having a problem with speaking, speaking. Yeah, yeah. agstailgate at gmail.com. Find us on the YouTube, subscribe, what do you like to call it? Smash the subscribe I'll button. Smash, you just smash, smash the subscribe yeah, smash. button. You know, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, break it. Let's do a quick little, I, I, don't, I want to spend two seconds on this. Aggie basketball. Yes. Aggie basketball, I think they're eight and four overall. They've got one more non-conference game coming up. Tough one? Not a tough no, not not a tough one. No, Perry okay. and I believe. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. they just beat a very tough, very tough Houston team. Houston team. Mm-hmm. Not Houston. Uh, Houston Christian University, yeah. actually. Not U of H. Not, not U of H, yeah. because they lost to them. That actually, hey, that, that they was played a pretty good game. Played hey. pretty well. Knocked them out of the top 25, that too. That Prairie View team, remember that name, Prairie View? We got a lot of players transferring into our football program from Prairie View, I think. Yeah, from Prairie View. That's, That's where we like could. to find our good yeah. football training. Should be solid. Should be solid. Honestly, with this with this basketball team right now, I mean they're they're, they're not playing great. I mean, it's just completed consistency from every player on that roster. I think well, yesterday... Hefner went off and had a great game. He's had another one other great game this season. You know, Coleman's been up and down. Taylor, you know, probably had one of his best games against U of H, but he hadn't really been, you know, the guy that we expected to be the full-time leader from the beginning of the season. Right. Um, Inconsistent. Inconsistency is, is the word for this year so far. For Taylor especially, I think. You know, Manny has shown some flashes, but, you yeah. know, not, once again, not on the floor consistently either. Um I think, but, you know, as this team has done over the last few years under Buzz Williams, they get better as they go, right? Absolutely. We hope so. I would expect that to continue this year, right? I expect that Taylor is going to start coming in day in and day out and performing as the SEC player of the year that he was nominated as at the beginning of the season. I expect that that's going to start. We're going to get Radford back into the mix. He's been, we've missed him. That's you know, not having him against U of H, I think, was huge. Marvel's not coming back. Yeah, Marvel, I don't think, is coming back. But lots of big, good things to look forward to in the new year for this basketball team, right? SEC As play. SEC play, so it's great. good stuff. Hey, good we stuff. have a tough SEC start now. I mean, we've yeah. out the bat. We got, like, Alabama, Kentucky. There's some heavyweights right Yeah, they're, they're going to have to come in and play right off the bat. Yeah. Right about that's, mm-hmm. that's for sure. So let's move on to football because I, we know that's what everybody wants to talk about. We know what that's what everybody wants to listen about. You know, all the commentary that we're getting right now is, well, some of it is very sort of reminiscent. And it's, said, you know, sort of commentary about, guys, I sort of, we apologize because you guys were so right when you guys were talking about Jimbo and all the things that he was screwing up. Yeah. And we only waited till now to see it, but now it's clear. So, Pat myself on the back. Thank you, commenters, for pointing that out. We like to be right. I'm mostly right all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, any comments there, Phil? Um, are you being mostly right? No, 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 no. No, no. no need for that. Corey? <laughs> I agree with yeah. you. We're mostly yeah. 50. Yeah. We're 50 50, yeah. mostly right. 50 yeah. 50. Uh, <laughs> did have some good award season stuff at the end of the football season. Most of all, and the guy that, you know, hey, listen, Corey, tell, tell everybody about this. I've been, I've been putting this guy name out there for two years now. 
But this year, AP All American, ESPN All American, that's among other All American accolades. Edge Cooper, first oh, teamer. Yeah, that's Dude thing. is absolutely off the charts this year. Should have been last year, except his defense coordinator and position coach weren't very good. And the dude is absolutely going to earn probably a first round draft pick. Oh, yeah. You know, Mel yeah. Diver's got him as number one inside linebacker yeah. coming out. Number, he was like number, number seven one. or eight overall. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's, it's impressive, man. I am so happy for that kid. I'm so happy that he's gone and the production that he was able to show. Not only that, I mean, the, it's his athleticism is off the charts. Absolutely yeah. off the charts. You know, I think he can do it all on a football field. He's he can he can cover, he can rush, you know, he can get downhill and get to the football. I'm a big believer in Ed Cooper. I think he's gonna have a big career in the NFL. You know, y'all Scott's quarter one starts off. Well, getting downfield, he didn't do that till this year. They didn't let him. Last year he was basically covering running backs or slot receivers. Yeah. And we knew he could do that. We were excited about that. But we didn't know about the downhill ability. And man, he showed that this year. Tackles for loss, sacks. You name it. He's everywhere. He's a little bit everything. Yeah, the pressure thing was a new thing for him too, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, they used him the way they should have been used, and it showed um, on the on the defense period, but also on his individual performance as well. Yeah, and you know, you know, you guys know I'm not one to just give credit when it's not due here, but I do have to give some credit to Smart and Dirt. Who took over the linebacker's job this oh, yeah. year? Great job. And I'm going to say this because obviously Edge Cooper is one part of that. But not only Edge Cooper, Torian York was a freshman All American this year as well. Well deserved freshman. You know, sometimes we get those freshman All Americans, just guys who got snaps, right? You know, this guy deserved it. I mean, he was a beast in the middle of his defense, also a terror in the box, right? Now, he's not that same sort of Edge Cooper sideline to sideline no. guy. But in the box, he that guy was, middle linebacker. Yeah, was solid. Yeah, solid. Very, very much so. As a freshman. So, so give, I, I did give Smirk and Erica a little bit on that because both of those linebackers obviously played pretty well. And then the other freshman All-American, Chase DeSantis, who for two and a half seconds scared the bejesus out of us when he had to transfer. Yeah. Oh, was that scary? He was our, he got, he was our top transfer. Well, oh, yeah, and then we got him back. So yeah. he has been our best transfer portal addition yeah. so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope he does better than this next year. <laughs> Look, he was a freshman playing playing in the SEC this year, man. There was times when he got overpowered for sure. But the guy still was, you know, I mean, I think the guy still has all the necessary, necessary talents, skills, you know, the body size, the, the athleticism, all those things are there. There's a big piece of What's going to happen with Elko that's going to be about what this new offensive line coach can do <laughs> with that group of players, right? And we're going to get a little bit more in-depth into that. Sure that's huge. That's going to be a big, big, big deal for them. Um, a few all-SEC accolades here. Cooper, we know, first team. Anais, a first team all-purpose and a return guy, so twice on the first team deal. Uh, Shamar Turner on the second team D-line, Layden Robinson on the second team offensive line. I think that last one right there sort of tells you a little bit about what the people voting on this actually know about football because Layden Robinson might have been one of the worst mm -hmm. freaking offensive linemen in the SEC this year. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he gets voted is for name and recognition, right? Two years ago, he was, you know, yeah. thought of the as, guy. As, a, the as a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and listen, let me, let me say this, right? I love me some Layden Robinson, but I'm not gonna lie to you. The guy was horrible. So there you go. I'm not sure you love him. Nothing against sure you love him. That's love. That's tough love. Mm -hmm. you get. Nothing. Nothing against Layden. Tough love. You get. Tough love. Man. <laughs> Quick mention on the schedule. You know, we had the schedule release a couple of weeks ago. We didn't really talk too much about it. I mean, you know, we're we're not gonna get in depth here. But starting off, Notre Dame at home. Yeah. McNeese at home. Big one. You go and travel to Florida, mm -hmm. back at home for Bowling Green, Arkansas Jerry World, Missouri at home. That's a, that's a big, that first big tough one, I think. Yeah. At Mississippi State, I got I got a second for you. At Mississippi State, LSU at home, at South Carolina, New Mexico State at home, at Auburn, and then Texas at home. <laughs> this home schedule is about as 
one, as tough as it's going to get. But the least it's exciting. exciting. It's, it's exciting, exciting, right? Right? Like having all these teams come. To, yeah. Look, Notre Dame. Yeah. Missouri. Yeah. LSU. Mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah. I mean, those are huge. Yeah. In Kyle Field. Yeah. Now, it's going to be bad if you lose all four of them. Yeah. It's going to be bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look, it, home it, 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 and right, that's not home. We're going to lose probably most of those games. Look, those are our four toughest opponents of the year. Those are our four toughest opponents of the year. If you're good, having them at home is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Have, getting them all four at home is a good thing. Don't you think? Yeah. So, what do you think if you go? You go three and one there, two and two. Is that a win? What do you like? What's a win on those home games? Like well, on your record at those four home games? You better go three and one. I would think so. Right. You better go three and one if you want to start competing with the big dogs. Right. That's really hard. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get left behind yeah. because you're going to get left behind, and you know, because Texas is in the final four right yeah. now, and they're going to be just as good next year. Yeah, they're going to be. Right? It's not better. It's not better. But if you go two and two there, then your your away games are fairly winnable, right? You do have a so good then, schedule away. Now we know that the Huggies have struggled winning a, a, away from Kyle Field. That's true. In the last, you know, I think we're 0, 0 9 in the last three years or something right. like that. And so that'll be the first thing that we want to see about Elko. Can he go to Florida and go win a game over a team that they should be better than, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's another scary team. I mean, we got there, an awesome so uh, defensive home. guy, too. There's another scary team we're playing there at home. You didn't say New Mexico State. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not. Maybe. They beat the crap out of Auburn. They did. Nobody saw it coming. Mm -hmm. Beat the crap. You don't think that could happen to them next year? No. It happened to us the year before last at yeah. State. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And if I'm that happens, y'all heads up. Let me just uh, tell y'all: if that happens, if that happens, then they should fire Mike Elko right off year one. Just year one. Just get rid of him. Bye. Hmm. If he loses to New Mexico State. Thank you for. Your, year, saying, your year of service. Thank you for your 10 weeks of service. You can go now. But hey, this schedule, looking at it, I think at eight and four. If you go eight and four, you're about to drop down to middle of the pack SEC for the rest of your time around here. Well, that's where they're at right now. Because seven and five this year. Because here's the thing. Once Texas gets here, once Texas gets here, starts playing an SEC schedule and starts winning. And starts winning, then the recruiting battles are going to go their way. They're right. winning. And, and they're winning. They're yeah, right. well, but that's my point. And they haven't even got to the SEC yet. So yeah. it's going to get worse. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, so Elko doesn't have a like a grace period here. He doesn't have, he can't just say, okay, it's only year one. Don't use the Jimbo Fisher excuse of for seven years, it's like we're just now getting our players in, right? Right. Yeah. You know, first of all, he recruited half the freaking team. So he doesn't have that excuse one. But two, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the time. He doesn't have the time because of the exact situation he's walking into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can't it can't be a rebuilding year. That that narrative cannot cannot be there. And I, I mean, I don't think Elko's at least right now his narrative is not that. Yeah, you it know, is. it, it, it isn't. Is so I um, that's a positive. Yeah, yeah. It, he is not talking that. No. Uh, no, something I just found out a little while ago. Notre Dame, this is interesting. Yeah. Notre Dame to open the season. Notre Dame just got done hiring Denbrock, the offensive coordinator from LSU, the guy who coached the best offense mm -hmm. in the entire country this year. They just hired him. They just took him away from LSU. Supposedly, the Aggies tried to take him from LSU, couldn't get him, and Notre Dame went and got him. Well, it's good he went and got him, but he's not going to have Jalen Daniels there throwing the ball. He's not going to have those two badass receivers catching the ball. You can be a great offensive coordinator all you can be, but yeah. you don't have those guys around you to fit your. You know who their quarterback's going to be? Yeah, the guy from uh, Duke. Yeah, Leonard. Mike Elko's old guy. Yeah, Mike Elko's old guy. I like Leonard. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not only he's crazy good, I'd rather have Connor Wendell. But remember when LSU lost most of their their offensive group? Look what happened the next year. They won a national championship and then stunk. So I mean, no, 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 no. When LSU lost their two, their offensive guru, then they they won it with him. They won and, then, great. and then they he left, and then they went to crap. That's what I'm saying. So an offensive coordinator can make a difference. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. But I mean, he went there, but 
the offensive coordinator is going to learn what he has to work with the first season. He does, he's not sure. like that Jalen Daniels. But let me ask you this. Daniels makes any offensive coordinator look good. Like, sure, sure. A play breaks okay. down, he can go what's, wherever he what's, what, Did he make the guy in Arizona look good? Or Arizona State? No, he was still no, good. He he was didn't. What year was he there? I, I understand that. So sometimes it's age, right? Yeah, I mean, but, sure. more, but that development sure. from that coordinator who he's been with the last two years also was a part of that. Right. But you're right. He's a special talent. I'm not going to take away from that. Not to mention the two receivers he was throwing to pretty impressive group of young men. That's the whole thing. I mean, right? Arizona State doesn't have the talent LSU has. You put any good quarterback on Arizona State's team, yeah. any good quarterback okay. on LSU's team, you have more talent around. You're okay. going to look better. You're going to play better. Sure. All I'm saying is I would have been excited to have Ben Brock as our offensive I'd hire him as our head coach, to be honest with you. But they didn't hear no there. Like he's, going to Notre, he's going to Notre Dame, yeah. and he's going to Notre Dame, and I don't care what you actually think about Dan Brock and this LSU squad. The fact of the matter is you can't deny that you expect them to be better, right? That offense was mediocre at best this year. Even in spite of that, that offense corner gets hired, I think, at, at, at Troy or one of those, you know, I think at Troy to, be, to replace the guy that, that left. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that – Offense with Denbrock will be better than they were last year. Well, it's the and head coaches. Is this, this will be his third year? Yes, so this will be his third year. Yeah. Three. Which will be a good te a test for him to see. And I mean, he's done well the first two years, I think, for where, where they were and then coming in. Yeah, I mean, they started off pretty strong this year and then kind of. I mean, they, they didn't finish too strong, did they? Was it not red? It's not going to be yeah, easy, right. man. It's my point. No, it's not. That's it. Look, and, and game one, right? I mean, you're talking about a team that's going to be under new coaching staff and everything's new, right? Mm -hmm. All the processes are new. What's a home game look like? New. Well, you know, what? You know, all those things. So, yeah, I think that's, look, that's a tough way to jump in. Sorry, Mike. But. I like it, though. I like it. Big, a oh. big, big game at the beginning. I, oh, yeah. I, I really, I like it. I always like that. So let's talk about this team and where things stand, right? We went through the recruiting class. Right now, I think we're at 16. 16 players, freshmen coming in. Yeah. Right? Uh, two of them still unsigned. The two best defensive linemen and, and Bussy, the, the athlete. And, uh, McKinney. McKinney, the, the yeah. defensive lineman, right? Those are the two best guys, five-star type, type players. And so those guys aren't signed until February. There's a lot of stories about they're being chased by – Big time programs, right? Sure. Which is, you know, expected. Mm -hmm. Right. It's always going to happen. Right. But, you know, let's assume those guys are with us. Let's assume those guys are with us. That's a total of 16 kids. It's not a huge class, but it's the first class for Mike Elko. It's the first it's class 18, for Mike Elko. Yeah. 15 or 18, somewhere around there. And, and uh, you know, he had to try to keep it together in the midst of this storm, right? In a matter of a week. So, right. let me just get your thoughts. Phil, why don't you start us off here? Tell us a little bit. I don't know, what do you think? Well, if I it's a win or a loss for Mike Elko. I don't know what to what to call it at this point. It's the sheer number is the problem, right? So if you look at the average, yeah. on like this, the talent wise that we brought, yeah. their average star rating is right up there with everybody. The problem is is like it's not really the the five star miss and the four star because we're probably about where everybody else is besides mm -hmm. the top three recruiting classes. But just the sheer number, like there's hardly any three stars in that we that we landed, and I, it's it's that's where our ratings put us down, in my opinion. Um, and I don't want to go too far into the whole defensive coordinator thing, but that I mean that killed us not having Layton. I mean that's where the recruiting, that's where we got hurt. Right. We got hurt all. I mean, uh, you, Elijah, right. Elijah. Sorry. Um, that's where I think we got. That's where we lost in the two this year. I think that that hurt us. And he's yeah. overcome it somewhat. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a C. Ooh. Corey, what do you think? Job so far by Elko on this recruiting program. Man, I'll be honest. Recruiting's changed so much over the last few years with this NIL portal, the transfer portal. We might get a great recruiting class. Who's going to say they're going to be here next year, the year mm -hmm. after? I mean, you develop players and they move on. You don't develop them; they still move on. You don't you don't know what it means. Yeah. Um, so I, I really don't know. I don't know what to tell you about that. I don't expect much out of freshmen coming in. Uh, well, first year freshmen. I mean, how many of them really make a difference? Basantis played twelve games at right tackle. He had his butt kicked a lot this year. Dorian yeah. York was a was he a was key good. component to that defense. He was very good, but I mean, you're talking about a small number. Yeah. I mean, the, the sure. other freshmen that were highly rated. Have, 
defensive tackle hitch that he he didn't see the field hardly. Oh, Platt didn't play much at tight end. There were two guys I expect a lot out of. And then there were there were there were both of those positions were heavy. Like I mean, so that's the whole point 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 point. That's the point of recruiting. That is the point. heavy. So that way they can sit out that year, get bigger, stronger, learn the offense, and help recruit. Actually, they, they those guys should be helping recruit. But overall, I mean, I'm not as excited as I have been with the Jimbo classes. Jimbo, he had a gift. He could get guys in here. Yeah, I mean, he he, he had to know, get the know. gab, right? The yeah. dude can talk, apparently. And sure. He can, talk, he can go into somebody's house and convince them somehow that, look, this is the way to go. And But here's here's the thing about that. And the problem with the whole thing is that he gets all this credit for being such a great, great coach because he's a good recruiter. But at the end of the day, he still couldn't win with all the talent in the world. So you can be the best recruiter right. on the planet. And if you can't coach, it doesn't mean shit. So exactly. good, good riddance, right? Exactly. Now, there's coaches that can do more with less. And you know, hopefully, this Mike Elko staff is 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 doing that. I I'll tell you this with regards to this specific recruiting class, and you know the transition and everything that's gone on here. And look, not on top of that, dealing with the fact that Texas is in where in the place that they are, and everything you know, and and everything that comes with that. Yeah. To me, I think Elko's done a pretty good job of trying to keep a lot of this class together, and the folks that he has kept in house. Look, the three offensive linemen are are, are are big additions, right? You know, being able to get a good group there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got some good good defensive linemen as well and a good group there. The, the deficiency, and here's where he's going to have to work to make it up. The deficiency is at DB, right? Oh, yeah. The defensive backfield, he, he I don't think there's a single corner in this class. And, and so, and the depth for this team right now at corner is pretty light. Right, mm-hmm. because Chappelle's gone, because Harmon's gone. Right. Mm-hmm. right, right, and so that's the group that he's going to have to do something from here until the beginning of next season, where he's going to have to add some guys, and he's added a guy in the portal that's probably one of the better corners out of out of Kansas State. Right, I mean, yeah, he's, I, guess I can't remember his name. He's a well. he's a legit player, um, and and so you 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 look at him, you know, uh, Will Lee, right. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, that's going to be one of those guys. But, you know, you're going to have to have – I think you're still going to have to need, have another couple of bodies, whether it's from freshmen. Well, we got some. We got a guy from Central Michigan. We got a guy from another uh, powerhouse. Mm-hmm. Where was that? I know it's Central Michigan, but he's getting bigger. Yeah, he's, he's, a, and he's a safety, but he's a safety. But we're getting bigger guys is what I'm saying. That's what he wants to get. You saw this year a lot of our smaller defensive backs got the ball thrown over them by LSU, by – Bigger targets at Alabama. Those guys had huge games going up against a five eight five nine. In fact, now we got six two six three six four. We got size. That makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does. But let's be honest, right? I mean, it's not the only thing. Well, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the only thing, right? But you give me a good big man. They always say, my dad used to tell me, good big man or good little man is good, or good big man is better. Yeah. Come out the door now. Yes. Michael well, Jordan was a big man. No, he was not. Six, six, not big? <laughs> no. <laughs> big man in the NBA is seven foot, right? They're, they're a dime a dozen. They're not a dime a dozen now. Back then, they weren't. Yeah. Listen, here's the other thing that's the one of the things that's worse. We talked about numbers, right? Yeah. Which for sure, it's going to be an issue. The question is how you recover over the next year, basically, right? Can you bring in us a much stronger class next year, numbers wise, mm-hmm. in order to make up for it, right? And then you've got a two year sort of a two-year deal, right? Right. Now, but the other thing is, if you look at that, your, the ranking you said right now is 16, 17, somewhere around 18. 15, um, 18 oh, 17. Oh, right. oh, yeah. so the, class, the class rank. The, just the recruiter. Just the recruiting. Uh, 17, 16, like 16, 16, right. 16, somewhere in there, depending on who yeah. you're looking at, right? Yeah. The problem is that there are eight other SEC teams in front of you. Right. Yes. <laughs> Including the top three, by the way, in Georgia, Alabama, Texas. Oh, three yeah. top-ranked classes. All three of them SEC teams. Mm-hmm. Welcome, yeah. Welcome to hell. Well, and the fall off after those three is significant. Like I mean, it kind of bunches up there, but those three, though, I mean, they killed it. That's Florida awesome. had a horrible year, and they're ranked ahead. Of them. Yeah. Hell, Auburn, I think, is ranked ahead. Auburn. Well, we knew that he was eventually going to start doing. Yeah. Some, you know, he 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 came in with a. That know. is what it is. I mean, Jimbo could have a crappy year and still be a top ten recruiter. Sure. That's just what it is. I mean. Mm-hmm. About how you coach them up. I mean, look at Ole Miss. Ole Miss has gone, what, 10 and 2 the last couple of years? And they have 
They haven't got great recruits. They get all the transfer flow yeah, guys. They get guys that he's figured out the transfer flow like no other nobody well, else has. Is. People has to. That's what so, they have to do. So let me just and let me say this, right? I, I you know, I went and listened to Mike Elko after the class on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. He came in and he had some comments. And you told me something the other day, like, look, it doesn't really matter what he says. Just listen to him for five minutes. And it's like just a blessing at the fact that you're not listening to Jimbo. Anymore. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Right? I can believe that. Like, the, it doesn't matter what he says. He already sounds more intelligent. He yeah. sounds more, you know, willing to do things and adapt and coach and than Jimbo ever has, right? Right. And so... And he does have a whole lot less words. And... <laughs> well... <laughs> he talks a little bit slower. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, that's always a, that, that's already a positive, but I will say this and I talked and I told you Corey the other day, look, I had one, I had one problem with what he said in that interview. I had one problem. And that is sort of this message like, Hey, we're going after quality, not quantity. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. You're stuck with the qu quantity. You did get quality. You're yeah. stuck with the quantity. If you could get more, you'd take them. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. You would think. Yeah. You yeah. know? So don't try to sugarcoat it. Scholarships just hanging out there. I mean, yeah. And you know what? You ain't got to tell us that because you know most. Yeah, not, <laughs> maybe not most. Some of us are smart enough to understand, <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, I mean, nothing else he said was really out. You know, he talked about the defense, the, the hires, and why it's waiting. And he did kind of go towards you know try to make it sound like well these guys are coaching right now or whatever. You know, here in a minute we're gonna be. Able, well, here we get. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about the defensive staff hire. I was so uh, excited when he said that, by the way. What? I was like, oh, oh man, oh, we're, we're going to know. Bed. We're going to know. Yeah. We're about to know. Yeah. But before I go there, because I want to do the whole staff talk together, let's talk about transfer portal. You you talked, you, you mentioned it some there, okay? So let's talk a little bit about transfer portal. Let me read off some names of the guys that are, that are leaving. Tight end Garza. You remember him? No, oh, yeah. Nobody knows him. He didn't play much. Nobody knows him. Nobody. Kent Robinson, he's been the MVP of the Maroon and White game, I think, the last two years. Good. He's a great defensive one. MVP or something. Deuce Harmon. Big one. I think that's a big one. Because I, 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 thought, I thought this defense got a lot better when he started mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Uh, Chappelle, the yeah. other cornerback, to me, is big one. has been our best, our best defensive back the last couple of years, right? That's a three-year starter at the corner spot. Very consistent at that spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a loss, especially with the numbers, right? Fidel Diggs, loss. who now, and we know he's going to Syracuse. He's going to go play for Elijah at Syracuse. Mm -hmm. His brother has committed to Syracuse as a freshman, so you know, mm -hmm. he's got a lot of big loss. Say, no, we'll go and and he's from that area up there. So. Nobody wants to go to Syracuse. <laughs> well, I was right, except for Fidel Diggs. <laughs> and his brother. That means I was right about 15 players and wrong about one. <laughs> mostly correct. Oh, okay. You mostly, see? Mostly correct. Okay. Makes sense. I, I'll allow uh, we oh, talked okay. about Chase Basantis. Look. Big pick up there. Big, big pick up by Mike Elko. Way, way to go. Uh, tight end Jake Johnson. Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought he was good, but. Well, we got Green coming back. You got Platt, who's a year older. You got you got the kid from Purdue. Who I don't see him and Jake probably being that much different. Maybe the guy can get in front of somebody. Look, Jake Johnson did not block a soul all season long this year. Yeah. Right? So, no. it. <sighs> I'm mean, sorry to see him go. Sure, man. The guy's a talented kid. He's, oh, he's a good kid. He, he's a, he, he was a good Aggie while he was here. That's we gonna, we're not going to miss him. With Green, Platt, the Swede, Opio, the, guy uh, Purdue. the Purdue guy. I mean, yeah. these, we're, we're these gonna guys, are, we're going to be fine at tight end. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. We're going to be fine at tight end. He's going to go join his brother in North Carolina. Though, that's, that's good. That's good. Right? That's good. Well, hey, brother brother connection, well, it, it's a thing. It is. And it's it's, hey, that's one of the best coaches in the nation. Okay. And look, this is the last time they're going to be able to play together because Matt Johnson's not going to the NFL, so that's the last time. I'm uh, Overton, we talked about him and his brother both gone. Apparently, he's going to Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, it looks oh, like he's going to Alabama. That's a, is his brother going there, too? I don't know yet, yeah, but I imagine it probably is a yeah. tax deal. But, mm -hmm. You know, he came in with a lot of, lot of hype. Right. Uh, the dude reclassified a year earlier, still five star. You yeah. know, everybody thought this guy was about to. The problem is, just as he's about to break out because he's about to become a junior, not because of anything other than the fact that he's actually getting to be that age. Yeah. 
And now he's going to go play for the Alabama and Nick Saban, who may be one of the well, best. They'll play, they'll play him in the right position. He was out of position to half the game. The 75% they had him covering people. He's a star. The secondary. He is in the major rotation, for sure. He had mm -hmm. been He had been in the major. But you're right. I mean, that's no, I'm the, saying he's a star for Alabama. Oh, yeah, because they're losing both of their outside linebackers. I don't know if he starts or not, but he'll be in the rotation there, too. Yeah, yeah he, they're losing both of their outside linebackers. Yeah. Starting outside linebackers. Wait, are you kidding? Counting him as a linebacker? Outside linebacker. For, for Alabama, Alabama but for Alabama because Alabama plays the two, three, four. Okay. Where they're bringing those outside guys. Right? Okay. Gotcha. Um. Did we did we talk about Melvin? No, we're we're gonna. Okay. I, I want to say one more thing about Overton. I want to say one more thing about Overton, and that's that I don't blame him either because the whole smirking, nurking, having him covering people all the time and whatever that that was not what he exceeded at, right? That was not what's going to get him to the league. Yeah, you know, that is not going to be that thing. So I pre I understand where why he's why he's moving on. A guy that's probably going under the radar, Gilbert, mm -hmm. safety committed to LSU, man. So you know LSU and DBs, right? You know, so this dude, this dude to me was a player. Now, you know, he got hurt for it, and then Matthews started getting a lot more playing time, and I thought Matthews played well, played very well. So you can't you can't really say, it. but this dude was a was a good player for this Abby team. Right. And yeah. I think he's a great addition over there at LSU. I think he's going to be missed. 100%. Um, Walter Nolan. And and let's go Walter Nolan, and we're also going to talk clearly about Evan Stewart. Look, these two guys, these two guys are absolute national difference makers. They're NFL players. They are NFL players. They are big time players in the nation. They will be known. Mm -hmm. Both losing these guys is like losing a cornerstone of your offense and a cornerstone of your defense. That is the level of talent that we're talking about with Walter Nolan and Evan Stewart. Mm -hmm. Which I, one's a bigger loss? Probably Nolan. I think we can cover Stewart. Because I mean, Offensive line's got to play better if he gets the ball out to Stewart. Mm -hmm. No one can make a difference against other teams by himself. Look at yeah. Kelly Jackson this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think losing Nolan's bigger. I mean, they're both big losses. But I was sitting there thinking, like, you lose Walter, you lose Stewart. Well, you still have Connor. And you still, like, you're talking about these guys, cornerstones. Yeah. Connor's a cornerstone. Yeah. These guys were all supposed to be their junior year, mm -hmm. their strong year. Yeah. And Next now, year. Now, that's what I'm saying. And now they're all elite. <laughs> Next yeah. year. They're all elite. That's the problem. What, what, are you, talking what do you think? Oh, no one by I, I think no one by leaps and bounds. I think Stewart's awesome, don't get me wrong, but we have a very talented wide receiver core mm -hmm. and we have people that can catch. Um, and to Corey's point, Walker makes an impact by himself. Nobody has to get the ball to him. He's gonna go, he's gonna go yeah. chase down the ball. And so I think he's a bigger loss than Stewart, even though Stewart's probably what top. Two, three receivers in the nation. I would, I would imagine. Yeah, I, and look, ESPN had Walter Nolan ranked number one, and Evan Stewart ranked number two in the country as transfer portal guys mm -hmm. in the country. Not who did that? Who did that? ESPN. Oh, and they had both of those guys ranked one and two. And I agree. It's it's all about Nolan. If there has ever been a bag of money, mm -hmm. if there has ever been a bag of money, yeah. This is the guy you want to go spend it on right now. No, Jimbo? No. This guy. <laughs> okay. Right here. Let's make sure. If if NIL and the conversation about AM and NIL mm -hmm. has ever had any truth to it, here's your chance. Yeah. Here's your chance. Prove it, son. Okay. Because you know what? I think he's been pretty open about the fact that he wants a bag of money. I yeah. You know what I mean? I don't think there's much question in that. So how do we not compete with, with bags of money when it comes to the Ole Miss? And he's leaning towards Ole Miss. Sure, sure. Uh, a couple of other guys, uh, Raymond Cottrell was talking about, he, he was the first one in. Uh, Remington Strickland's going to TCU. Uh, Mocha, who got in trouble and whatever, the legal issues, going to Charlotte. Yeah. You know, nothing, nothing big there. But, you know, that, that core group of, of transfers is big. And, and that one, that one. No. No. Is the biggest of them all. Very big. And I'm gonna tell you, if every last freaking Aggie out there has not at least tried to contact them and say, hey, I'll add another fifty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever to your NIL packet, then 
You're not doing your job as an actor. That's the guy you want to go so get. So what would be the bigger loss? I mean, hey, would Walter Nolan or Connor be a bigger loss? Which one? If Connor enters the portal, which one would you say? For the Aggies, for next year. Can I be honest? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know where our backup is. You're not bad. Yeah, I'm taking Walter. I got you. I'm taking Walter. Because I think this dude's about to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft next year. Right here? Man, That's really the kind of season I think he's going to have. I think I'm so. I, I, he, I, I imagine he will. I imagine he will. But you know what? We're seeing what a backup can do when Connor's not in there. Yeah, he's he's good. He's not bad. Not bad. He's pretty good. I, I, I'll give I'm him a little bit I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to be excited to go see go see the freshman. The freshman producer. I hope he gets his playing time in the bowl. What's his name? Oh, man. Okay. We'll talk about it. Uh, uh, oh, no, no. No, no. No, no. Not Reese. Um, so, Reese. so... So, all this, we, you know, we basically talked about that everybody's leaving. Who's coming in? And yeah. here's my biggest problem with sort of what Elko has so far done. Is you look at that list of players that's exiting, and they're all big-time athletes, four-star, five-star guys, guys that have done it on the field, a lot of those guys, and have proven their worth. And here's the list of guys that are coming in. Wide receiver, Javon Harvey from Old Dominion. Old Dominion. Old Dominion. Love it. Wide receiver, Cyrus Allen from La Tech. Ooh, 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 ooh. Cornerback, Will Lee. Five. No. Cornerback, Will Lee from K-State. He might be top 10. Yeah, he might be. Linebacker, Alex Howard from Youngstown State. Baby. Get it, baby. Get it. And safety trade Jones from Central Michigan. Look, <coughs> Ole Miss is pulling... Defensive tackle from Texas A&M, wide receiver from Georgia, Georgia. whatever. Yeah. You know, like, you know, Texas is pulling wide receiver from Georgia, and you know, these like. Are we conceding to the other bigger schools, or schools our size, saying we can't compete with y'all? Jimbo didn't co- then go down. get any of those guys. Jimbo didn't get any of those guys. He didn't need any of those guys. Elko better start. Elko needs. There's, there's big time names still out there. You, you got to go get some of these guys. Yeah. All right. And so that may be the one place, you know, and, and, and here's and your boys over at Tex Eggs, old Lucci and his crew, Nuno. You know, those cats sit over there and they're, I mean, boy, they will tell you these guys are about to be the all SEC performers next year. I mean, these wide receivers are so excited. I mean, oh, they did it. Stop. They had like 700 yards against the sorry ass competition they were facing last year. It's amazing. Right, like amazing. Yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope that they're right. Yeah, but the, but the, all the rankings and ratings on that, which I'm not saying it means everything, but there's something to it, and we're not getting those people right. So maybe they're right, but I don't see what data they're looking at that tells tells us that those guys are going to be. Well, we heard the same stories last year, right? Yeah. Right? No, I hear Rakes is gone. Rakes is gone. Yeah. Okay. Rakes and uh, Rakes is another addition. Just yet, yeah, graduate. Yeah. 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 He, he's he's transferring as well. Sure. That's a good point. That just came, that's, came more yeah, that's, more another, that's inside, right? And experience. Yeah. He's yeah. played a ton for well, us last year. We're eyeballing the fair view. Yeah, we're good, guys. Oh, so, no. so yeah. look, and, and don't get me wrong. Look, there's going to have to be some players. You know, last year, remember, they, they got Grimes, man, and there's a boy. They were selling him. He's going to be. He never saw the field. Like, that dude never saw the field. Never. But you know, this year. They, they they sold you the berry, right? And love hey, this. Love, love the berry. berry. Love, love it. Love it. But, well, don't you say a bad word about him. But he's undersized. He's an undersized corner in the SEC. Right. That's right? what I'm saying. He got beat. Yeah. Over and over and over and, and over and over and over and over and over and over again. One more. One more. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so. You know, we heard this story, right? The linebacker from Jacksonville State or whatever. That dude didn't touch the freaking field, right? These guys coming up a level. Guy yeah. These guys coming up a level. Whoa. Okay, okay Whoa. up two levels. Whoa. These guys coming up, up two levels. Level. You're talking about a team that they, goes. You know, and they were, you know, they were good players. Oh, at yeah. the, at How can you say they came up to a level where we were five and seven? Uh, five and seven. Competition. Competition left, Corey. We, Competition are, we are what our record says we are. Yes, but we're playing against teams that are in the playoffs right now. The play, the teams that you're playing against, the players you're playing against, they came up. 
They came up. Where? Because. Yeah, Texas next year. Playing in the SEC is more challenging than playing at Youngstown State. I tend to agree. Ah. So anyway, the point being is, the point being is that we've lost a lot of talent in the portal and we've added some depth. Right? That's, yeah. where, that's basically where we're at. Any right? of those guys start next year? No, not, one. No. Not, not one of those guys. Any freshmen, any transfers? No, neither one, right? No starters. I, I, the only one is uh, Basantis. I mean, you know what? All this is missing is just there's no splash, man. There's no splash. There's no splash. Mm-hmm. I've got a theory, man. Well, so I've got a maybe theory. the offense. That's I've, all got like that. I've got a theory. I've got a very, and this, look, prove me wrong. Oh, easy. No, no, no. I'm asking the people out there. Oh, prove oh, me wrong. You wanted me or Phil to like that's <laughs> pretty elite. You guys don't say much. Chance, doesn't take much. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Yeah. I'm asking the folks at Aggieland, the supporters of this program, the mm-hmm. guys who supposedly have filled this NIL bag, prove me wrong. What? But here's my. This is my theory of what's going on right now. Oh, oh God. So you've got say? you've got an administration. That's trying to let to show people, hey, this is Aggieland. We're here to win. We're creating champions. But in reality, in the conversations in the back room, you know what they've said? This is what I hear them saying. We're not going to put any more money in the NIL football. Work. We are tapped out. We are tapped out. We just paid Jimbo $75 million to go sit at home. He ain't even doing a podcast, man. Jimbo's just sitting at the house with $75 million. We spent all this money on the new stadium, the new facility, the new everything. We've we've given to these players for this recruiting class. And you know what we got? We got five and seven and seven and five. Yeah, y'all, y'all, eight, y'all, eight, y'all eight, listen, eight, I'm not done yet. And they saying, and they said, you know what? Y'all go hire Elko and y'all make sure that you keep the budget low on the coaching staff. And y'all tell these players that they're just going to have to suck it up. Because NIL money is is a little tight at the moment. And that is what I think is happening in the background. And Aggies proved me wrong. You want to prove me wrong? Go get Walter Nolan. Here's here's what I see. I see uh, these guys that put all the money in. They're pot committed. All their money's already in there. They're going to throw more money at it. Just because they're they're already there. They're going to throw more. They're going to throw more money in Texas. And Oklahoma yes. are in the conference now. Yeah. And they know that they can legally give money to the school like they did. And that money can go towards the players. Yeah. They're gonna give more money. They're gonna they're gonna sit there and make this bigger and better. They're gonna give Elko every chance to succeed. Prove me wrong. And it's up to Elko to do it. Prove me and wrong. Right now, I'll they, be honest they, with they you. Prove me wrong. Well, they they have have right now, Elko has made a bunch of good hires and a couple of questionable hires. They haven't done it for that. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the coaching staff because I think this is something that we all want to get into. That is. And look, this so far, we know, and he talked about it in his presser. You know, he had to go hire an office coordinator because that's going to be the identity of his office. He needed that person there to recruit, to do the things that he needs to do to keep the players here, right? Right, right. right. And he goes out and gets Colin Klein from right. Kansas State. Right. And, you know, I think most people are kind of are, are pretty good with Colin Klein. They like to hire. Right. Right? Most people like to hire. Yeah, I, do. I don't know that anybody is like through the moon on this thing. I don't think that anybody's like so excited. They're just absolutely like, this is it. Oh, yeah. I am all in on this freaking program. I'm going to, I'm going to sell my house so that I can buy stock in this program. Right. I don't know that anybody's doing it, yeah. but I think more people generally like them. Right. Yeah. Yes. 100%. I like it. I'm mad. Really like that. Yeah. So when you met him, did you ask him? Hey, Colin, I'm just curious. While we're talking here, just me and you bullshit, it's not going to go on the air at all. Right. <laughs> While we're talking here, are you going to adjust your system to Connor, Weg- Connor Wegman and his throwing ability, or are you going to force him in, in like a square peg and a round hole into your system where the running quarterback is the bigger thing? No, it's all about adjusting to the system, Connor. You know, Connor will be fine. He's going to make adjustments. Uh, Calvin Klein, whatever his name is. Um, Colin, Colin, Colin Klein. Klein. Calvin Klein. Who's that? That's underwear? Yeah. It's my underwear. No. Klein will make adjustments to make sure that Connor's... He's not going to do the running the ball a lot. He will run the ball some. That'll be a lot. Look, I, you, you can 
you can hear it in every episode I've ever done around here, right? I mean, the offense is the background of everything I do, right? And that former offensive coordinator, so on and so forth, offensive yeah. line guy. I love, if you go watch Kansas State the last couple of years, I love the formations, the misdirections, the movements, the different things that he does there. Right. He's not going to do Jimbo and just sit back and let me see if I can one-on-one match up you, right? He will do some things there that are going to help you offensively to slow down a defense that is just absolutely blistering off the ball, right? He's going to do those things. He's in a bit. Are you talking about like putting the swinging gate in there? Something like that? We we saw that play today. In Pretty cool. Bowl, bowl games are the best it. way to go find good plays. Yeah, right? yeah, go, go watch some bowl games because it's if a, you want a new innovative offense, just go, whoo, they will. They, they're going to run every single game. They better snapped it over to the wide receiver that was – yeah, 10 yards over here, and the guy ran it in for a two point. Which one was that? Arkansas State? Uh, it could have been. It could have been. It could have been. No, I thought, it was, I thought it was the Salukis. Oh, Northern Illinois. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I like, I like that. But the one thing that does concern me with Klein is when he played at Kansas State, that was their mentality. Tough. Hard nosed quarterback play based off the running game, yada yada yada. When he coached there, tough quarterback play, running game, blah blah blah. Right? I understand that, and it's a good quality to have, mind you. All those things are good things, right? But in today's game, with our weapons outside, you also have to be able to let that quarterback sling it, let him do some Jaden Daniels, right. get it out to the playmakers. And absolutely open this baby up. And I'm not saying yeah, that he what's won't. What's the easiest way to open it up? I'm not saying he won't. Start with the run. I'm not saying he won't. I'm just wondering whether he's going to make that slight adjustment. Now, Jaden Daniels' situation, you think he improvised a lot of those, or most of them were run calls? Oh, I think for him it was a lot of improvised. But there were, too. There, was, was, there were saying, some run calls. That's All what right. I'm saying. This coordinator, I think he deserves some credit. But yeah. Jaden Daniels is just a talent. But it's also helping him understand when it's time to go, too, right? Right. I can understand that. Yeah. I'm just saying. You and remember, we had a guy, we had a guy, Kellen Mond, who somehow could never figure out when it was time to go. Or, or, or he has pass team. run option. Or he's the run pass option. <laughs> or he's, who was on, uh, they had a uh, Case Keenum on the Manning Cat. Yeah, they, the, the pass, pass run option. <laughs> they always want to run RPOs. I wanted to run PROs. <laughs> but my point is, you have a guy like, Johnny Manziel at quarterback. Yeah. He can make the offensive, the offensive coordinator look yeah. really good. He did. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's my point about Jalen. This this offensive coordinator, he might be good. You're right. But we'll find out more if he can keep doing the same thing sure. at a different location. He, John also had a ridiculous office, offensive line with all these. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. listen here. Listen here. And, and, and this is never going to be the Josh, Josh, uh, bad. Uh, yeah. uh, Johnny. This is not ever going to be the bad Johnny show because, you know, he is – my favorite a and player of all time. That dude is a monster. He's a freaking legend. He yeah. built this stadium. Or he yeah, built yeah. what is going on in Aggieland and the SEC. That dude is a beast. One. Yeah. But let me get off my soapbox there. Yeah, that's true. Cliff Kingsbury himself has said, like, literally, John, I didn't even coach Johnny. He just showed up. We gave him the ball. He went out and played. How did he show up? Hung over. Oh, yeah, hung over. So, so, yeah, so, so, so look. I'm saying, is it the kind of it, but, but look, we, we feel all right. About, we feel about uh, Klein, right? We feel, mm-hmm. we feel good about Klein. About we we got to see what he's going to do, but we, we feel good. This offense is going to be better next year than it was last year. Cop, cop, cop. Right? Yep. Well, we didn't lose the near the Here's, amount of offensive players. Before we get to the defense, because this is where we're going to go, he also brought in offensive line coach from Duke, right? Can't be worse. His offensive line coach from Duke. Duke had a guy this year that's going to be a draft pick and everything else. Hopefully that tells us you something, right? I mean, they didn't have the level of talent over there that, that we did here, and yet their offensive line was right. better. Mm-hmm. It can't be worse than wait, Agassi, wait, right? Wait, wait. What's his offensive line better? Were they going up against SEC defense? That's, that's what you're saying. Now you're telling me you can't have it both ways. If you got guys, but you can watch a, you can watch an offensive line and say this guy is more technically sound than the. I'm just saying, if you're going to watch football every day, we're watching football every day. <laughs> and they're watching yeah. this play. The defense lines up with two guys outside of the tackle. 
The first one goes inside, the guard picks him up. The second one comes off the edge and absolutely assassinates the quarterback, right? Yeah, what did the tackle do? Nothing. He was not And what did you say about that? Terrible. Yeah? No, you know what he said? That looks like they ain't in <laughs> That's what it's. That's what he said. And you but know what, what I'm saying? Because is, that's not physical. That's mental. What I'm saying is, if you're Duke and you're playing against subpar competition, is that not going to make your offensive lineman look better? Well, but you, you're playing with that talent. That line's less talented than a and two. So all I'm saying exactly. Is, no, no. But let's, 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 let's not get off that. track here. Let's not get off track. All I'm saying is, there is no question. This guy's better than Adazi. How good he is, we don't know. Maybe he's not that good. He's but he's that. better than Adazi. Yeah, yeah. Because. What I've seen in the last two years is the worst coached offensive line in the entire country. Entire. So, entire. Well, you pay more attention to anyone, though. Yeah, but I watch a lot of football. I know. A lot of football. I know. A lot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I think he's a big – and he, we've talked about it, right? If this offensive line can be good, this offense is going to be good. Right. It's going to be great. That's what we've been saying for the last few years. This yeah. offensive line is good. This offense is going to be great. That's like I most teams. Right? That's just any team. You have good offensive most lines. Teams. Yeah, ninety percent of good teams have a good offensive line. That's 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 true. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he does the job. And if he does the job, I don't care who else they hire on that offensive staff. It's gonna be fun. So let's move over to defense, where you know this is sort of where all the questions have, have been coming from, right? It's like, okay, why haven't we hired a defensive coordinator? If you were didn't know who you wanted, why don't you just keep Elijah Robinson? He's gonna bring the consistency with the players. He's gonna right. bring all those things. He coached with Mike Elko before, right? Yep. He knows the system. And tell me, don't tell me that uh, Syracuse outbid you for him as an off as a defensive coordinator. Don't tell me that. Well, you just said that they're done giving money. Maybe that's it. So, question. Elijah leaves. Yeah. He's going to Syracuse because they offered him the, the defense quarter spot. Right. Elko comes in and he's talking about, oh, yeah, it's going to be revealed here shortly, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're playing games. There's bowl games, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The next day, the announcement comes out, and they've hired the linebackers coach from the University of Florida. Get out. They've also hired the defensive line coach from the University of Florida to replace Elijah. Well, he had to wait for that. Florida's getting ready for a big bowl game. Florida went five and seven the last two years. Oh, Their defense was not good. That's, not that's good. That's it. So why in the hell? Why in the hell is this guy, a guy that was fired as a defense coordinator at a previous stop? This guy now going to be the head defensive guy at Texas A&M. Did we run out of money? Maybe. Tell me I'm wrong. I'll tell you what I do like about it is what we're talking about right now. Our expectations seem like they're down. I enjoy going into it. Well, I enjoy it because usually when my expectations are really high with A&M, get disappointed. When they're down, I'm not expecting much. Maybe I'll be surprised. Well, I remember telling you, I was like, look, as long as Smirky Durky is not our defensive coordinator, you know, then I'm going to be excited about the defensive I don't, coordinator. Listen, and I don't think I, I... I wasn't. I was underwhelmed by the pick. I, I don't think... I don't think I did. I, I could never have imagined myself saying this. But I'd rather don't have Durkin. It. Don't say it. I'd don't rather have it. Jesus. I, I'm just telling you. I'd rather have Durkin. Show over? Is that, that's like the worst thing to say. <laughs> no, that is the worst thing to say. Jeez. Uh, I think you know, you'd be saying I want Jimbo back. No, I'd never yeah, say that. I don't know. I never thought you'd say Mike, that. I'm supporting you, brother. I got your back. Let's go win 11 games next year, and I'll have your back from there on out. All right? That boy, Mike Elko. Uh, quick, 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 quick mention here. Oklahoma State, next Wednesday, bowl game. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Gundy's still running the show over there. He's still got the mullet. They're 9-4. and four. Played in the Big 12 Championship. Lost to Texas by the 100. Um, but look, I watched that game. Texas literally pulled out every freaking stop they could have offensively. I mean, they the gadgets were out, the freaking yeah. plate. I mean, that was one of Sark's. They shouldn't have had to do all that, though, get that Oklahoma State. But I think that they were they're showing. Trying to make a statement. They're, they're, and, and they were trying to make a statement to get in. Yeah. And they were going to show it, and they were going to make sure everybody knew, here we come, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't know. 
what that means for this game with our skeleton crew, coaching staff, and whatever. What I do know is Oklahoma State's got one player on offense that I'm still afraid of. Bowman, quarterback? Right. No, not Bowman, the quarterback. Love you, Bowman. I know, great fun guy. <laughs> uh, but no, Ollie freaking Gordon. Yeah, that guy's good. That dude <clears throat> will absolutely kill us on the ground if we let him, right? He is a he is a ball player. Do they have any offensive line on Oklahoma State? They sound pretty good. There you go. Um, so that's the guy, that's the only guy I really worry about. And and then you said you said that there's a chance he doesn't play. Yeah, that's what I'm here. There's a chance. There's a chance he doesn't play. If he's coming back next year, that's all I'm saying. If he doesn't play, it, honestly, we should win this game even with our stuff. I don't. I don't really I'm don't think we're going to. I'm just telling you. Bowman, 13 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. That's the kind of guy he is. He's going to do. So don't put pressure on him. Think of it the opposite side. Can this group take a 
a, a group of players that has been consistently underperforming for the last six years. For the last six years, maybe last six, 12 years, right? Consistently underperforming. And can they take this group and turn them into an actual team that overperforms their talents? A team that plays like a Georgia, that plays like a Bama, that does as much as they possibly can with the talent they have. That's my question. That roster we have right now, can we win next year what we have? Say Nolan's gone, say Stewart's gone. Yes. Can we win? Can we? What are you saying we can win? Is if, it like 10 if, games, 8 games, 13? I'll saying? tell you what. If you just take and supplant the entire coaching staff at Alabama, let's say Georgia, and bring them here, that team wins 11 games at least. <laughs> at least. At least. It could be 12. All right, question number two, if roster remains, stays just as it is today, what are the expectations for 2024? Yeah, well, what are, what are they? What are the expectations? Tell me. No, mine are high. That's what I was saying earlier. My expectations? Yeah, maybe. Eight and four, seven, three. Notre Dame at home is a tough game. LSU at home is a tough game. Texas at home is a tough game. Who was the fourth? Missouri. Or? Missouri. I mean, we have more talent than Missouri. We have as much as LSU. I don't know if we have as much as Texas. Right I think we've got second. more talent than LSU at this point in time. That's what I'm saying. We have. I just said we have as much or more than LSU. Not maybe not as much as Texas. By the way, they're more than Daniels. They're two top receivers. Well, more than Notre Dame, right? Probably. So we should probably win three of those four games. But in reality, my expectations is we win one of the four. My expectations are going to cheat into all that and then we'll lose some stupid little game. Yeah. Have a three three loss season and just just ride out of the playoffs. All right, so here's here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Yeah. The only expectation that this program should ever have is playoffs, period. And I will not back down from that. I am going all in. This roster is playoff ready. Let me give you the reasons why. You're going to be very Connor next year. You're going to be I, I might be. You're right. You may, yeah, I may be. But you know what's more disappointing than that? Is yeah, not, having, not having any hope that you can actually win. And that's more disappointing. But let me give you the reasons why. Connor Wiggins, Le'Veon Moss is a stud. Ruben Owens is a stud, right? Yeah. On at receiver, Noah Thomas, Moose Muhammad. We've been calling for that dude to be let loose. Right. He's about to be let He's loose on the to. country. Yes, he is. Moose Muhammad, Jaday Walker, Micah T. Right? These guys are playmakers. Don't get me wrong. Add to that in the pass catching group, Donovan Green. Theo and Jaden Flat at tight end. I love this set of skill players. Offensive line wise, returning experience. Look, on top of the guys that started this year, which are all back, mm -hmm. except for Layden Robinson. Thank goodness Layden Robinson's leaving. Fathery comes back and rejoins this group, buddy. Yeah. Fathery comes and, and Where's then Father going to play guard or tackle? I think he can move. He comes back and tackle, and I think they move the Santos the, the in his guard. There you go. To be honest, there you go. You know, mm -hmm. but my point is that now they've got bodies, talented bodies with experience, right? With that. At the offensive line, new new coach for those offensive line, and he's going to be the key. This offense should be yeah. as explosive as it gets. And let me give you the defensive playmakers here. Let's hear. Let it. me give you these defensive playmakers. Shashaw. Shamar Stewart. Oh, okay. Shamar Stewart is going to be all SEC next year. Woo. First round draft pick, Shamar. You heard him calling it. Call it right now. Yeah. How about Shamar Turner? First round. Shamar Turner. Oh, that yeah, guy's going to be all the SEC. Yeah, he was all SEC this year, by the way. Him. Second love team all SEC this love year. Love Shamar him. Turner. All SEC. A nine white and and Malik Silla coming off the edge. Those two guys are going to start to show in their third year some of the reasons that they were big time. He's always been high. So. Yeah. And by the way, when they let him loose, when they didn't have him in coverage this year, guy made some plays. DJ Hicks, our five star defensive tackle from last year, he's yeah. about to take a more prominent role. Exactly. Add the big Hawaiian, Samu. Yeah. That dude is huge, huge when you need to run stopper, right? Right. Brunlo Dindy, who's gotten lost in this whole mix, is now going to be a guy that's got a chance to come and be a big time performer. I hope so. Linebacker, Torian right. York, all SEC freshman, coming back as a second year guy, as the leader of this team, establishing that kind of situation with probably one of the young guys in either Chance Johnson or Sanford or Bartrell Harris that's going to come in and help along those lines. Yep. We know what Anderson can do at safety. 
him and Matthews are big time superstars. Right. Big time superstars in the making with Kerr, Dalton Brooks, another couple of guys in the back in the back end there to help. Mm-hmm. Cornerback is the place, really and truly, where I think this is where you have to absolutely to get solidify up. this, right? Yeah. Because we're talking about Lee coming in from Kansas State, but you're talking about guys like Thomas as a freshman, got some playing time out there, looked good for a freshman, right? But he's mm-hmm. got to take that next step, so he's probably going to be in the mix as one of the starters. Well, we got right? some other guys out there. Too. Braven, Braven, uh, yeah, Braven Rogers, the Barry, you yeah. know, they're still back. McCall, oh. still back, right? Yeah. If we don't know, out there we don't know what Grimes, we don't know, we don't know Grimes is the deal with Grimes is the deal. Yeah, but so there, there's bodies there, and that's sort of the weak spot. But the rest of that roster is loaded with top end talent, man. Loaded with top end talent. Now, the thing is, the top end talent, where's the depth at? Where's the depth? Because injuries have hurt us the last few years. And that's where I come back, and we'll close on this because it's the guy that you've been harping about, man. You've been harping about this dude, and it's the hire of the strength, new strength and conditioning yep. coach, Moffitt, right? That guy has an ability to shape this team and build, you know, what is the core, core, core of this team so that now we can't, we don't have the same excuse we do every year. Why is everybody hurt, right? Drives me nuts. Ags, let me tell you this, man. I am up here up here with where we're going. I'm up here with where we're going. But here's the thing. I'm right here. Here's the thing. Right you don't here, have right. you don't I'm have right any here. leeway, baby. I'm ready to go there's, up here. I'm right there's here. There's no leeway. I'm right here. Because one bad season could tank this thing. Texas is all hard. Last year was this season. The year before that was this kind of season. What kind of season? <laughs> hey, look. Either way, Giga Maggie's, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.